Hi all. This is the first of the video in a series of videos where we are going to be looking at what each of the different question types in the data insight section comprises. What is it all about? We'll start with table analysis today. Quickly about the data insight section. The data insight section comprises 20 questions that you need to answer in 45 minutes. So we are talking about two minutes and 15 seconds per question. That's essentially the time available to us. Two and a quarter minute is what we have. Table analysis is one of the five question types. The five question types are table analysis, graphical interpretation, two-part analysis, multi-source reasoning, and data sufficiency. Let's start looking at this. In this video, I'm going to give you what, are the, what is the structure of this question, what does it expect you to do, and a sample question. We're not going to solve the sample question. I'm going to leave that as a homework for you. Solve that question and mark the answer to that question. Give your answers in the comment section of this video. We'll do a separate video which will have a solution to that in which we'll discuss as to how to go about it. Let's get started with what a table analysis question basically entail, right? Yes, a table analysis question, how many questions will be there? That's a good place to start. You'll have anything from three to four questions of the table analysis type. Now, what does it entail? It'll start by giving you a brief introduction about what data the table talks about. This is an optional thing. Why I'm saying optional, there are quite a few questions where you'll see what it is going to talk about presented to you. Some cases, the information given on the table is so evident that they need not give you any introduction about it at all. So obviously, once they're given an introduction, they ha have to present you with the data, which is going to be in the tabular form. So the data that's given to you in the tabular form, the table essentially on each of the column head lets you sort the data in ascending or descending order, right? You can choose which one you want to do. It's a toggle key. Basically, go to the third column and basically there's a button there. You click on it, it'll sort it in ascending order. You click it once more, it'll sort it in descending order. You do not want it as third column. You want it as first column. Do the same thing with the first column. It's going to happen. I'm going to take a couple of examples in the subsequent slides to show you how this basically works. Now, we know what the data is about. The data is presented to you. Now comes the question. They're going to tell you what you need to do. That's a question stem. Finally, you're going to have answer options in which you're going to mark. What kind of questions are you going to be finding out in table analysis? The questions that you see in table analysis are basically classification questions. They'll present to you three statements and they'll want you to classify each of those statements into two categories. They'll say, hey, is this true or false? Is this greater or smaller? Is this information that you can infer or you cannot infer? Is this information which is stated or which is not stated? Mention yes, mention no, mention true, mention false, mention greater, mention smaller, right? So you have to classify each of the statements into one of these two categories. So every table analysis question is followed by three statements, which is going to have a classification, right? That's essentially what the question is all about. Now, having got what the components of it, there are four parts, intro to the table, the table, the question prompt and the answer options, right? The place where you're essentially going to be evaluating the, in, the statements against the information given in the table, the classification part. Let's look at each of this with an example. This is essentially the introduction to the table. In this case, it talks about the table provides key economic parameters for country X for years 2019 to 2023. So these are the rows that we have. The parameters that we are talking about are basically the GDP in billion US dollars, unemployment rate in percentage, inflation rate in percentage and interest rate in percentage for each of these five years from 19 to 23, right? So this is the data available to us. This is the introduction, this is the data itself. Now, for instance, look at it. This data is sorted in ascending order of the years. If you want it to be sorted in terms of unemployment rate, because they're asking, let's say, what was the range of unemployment or between these two years, what happened? Between the lowest and the second, third highest, what happened? If they're asking you any of these things, sorting it on unemployment rate is going to make a lot of sense. So how do you go about it? There'll be a button here, which you can click to sort it on unemployment rate. Let's say we want to sort it in an ascending order of unemployment rate, becomes 4.95, 5.2, 5.56. Correspondingly, all other data also is going to move along with that, right? If you click it once more, it would do it in the descending order of unemployment rate. The question is not about unemployment rate. If it's a question about the interest rate, basically go and click that button. You're going to have this entire information sorted in ascending order. Click it once more. It's toggle key. You'll sort it in descending order of inflation interest rate, right? So you can choose which one you want to sort it on ascending or descending order, depending upon what question you have. So we looked at the introduction. We looked at the table itself. We know that the table can be sorted. 
Now what comes the third component, which is a question prompt. The question prompt for us, based on the information given, mark true if the statement can be inferred from the table, else mark false is what they are saying. If that information is true, mark it as true. The information is false, mark it as false. Basically pick the statement, evaluate it against the information given in the table. Let's take a look at what information we have. We have three statements. We are essentially going to classify it as true or false. Annual rate of growth of GDP in 2022 is the same as that in 2023. Right. Essentially, GDP growth rate for two years, go to the table, this is what you're going to have. GDP's growth rate, find out, check out whether it's false or whether it is true. Right. So if you want, you can take a screenshot of this particular table right now when you're trying to solve it. Right. So this is this essentially the first statement is all about getting information from the second column in the table. Quickly move on to the second statement. Second statement is again something which you will have to classify it as true or false. The interest rate during the five year period given in the table is positively correlated to the inflation rate during the corresponding period, right? Interest rate and inflation rate are basically positively correlated is what they are saying during this five-year period. You need to figure out from the information about both the inflation rate and the interest rate. So we are going to look at columns four and five and see whether they are positively correlated. How do you go about it? Think about it. Think about it. If both of them increase simultaneously or decrease, if one increases, the other also increases. One decreases, the other also decreases. If it happens, then we know that we are talking about a positive correlation. If one increases and the other decreases concomitantly, we are talking about a negative correlation. See if a sorting is going to help you solve this. Right? Keep that perspective in mind. The third statement we are going to look at is the median values for three of the four parameters. Are we looking at four parameters? is one, two, three, four. For three of the four parameters, the median value among the five years happened to be in 2021. Check out, again, sort it in ascending order. The five years for which we have data, the third year in ascending order should be in 2021. For three out of the four parameters, that's what it says. Classify the statements as true or false. Not one thing. If the correct answer, for instance, is, I, I'm not saying this is a correct answer. Correct answer, for instance, if it happens to be true, false, true. Unless you get all three of them right, you're not going to earn credit for this question. There's no partial credit. If you mark it as true, false, false, for instance, these two are right. They're not going to give you two thirds of it as a credit. You need to get all parts right. That's what makes this entire data insights or the IR component of it a little tricky. Most of these questions have multiple components to it for you to solve. So when you solve them, unless you get all of them right, you would have invested adequate amount of time some error in judgment, some quick calculation that you made a mistake, some sorting that you did not do carefully, right? Could result in one of these three going wrong. You lose all credit. So the only word of caution for you is that you have 20 questions to solve. Data sufficiency questions are questions where you might be able to quickly run through it. There are questions in this which might be easier, so run through them quickly. Be very meticulous, be diligent, right? Uh, be a lot more discerning in the way you look at the data and spend adequate amount of time in it so that even if, for instance, or the 20 questions, you do not solve two questions, you solve 18 questions only. Get all of them right. There's no point solving more questions and making these mistakes and not earning credit to it. So slow down a bit. Initially, don't bother too much about the time. Get the idea, get the handle of it. Look at these statements. What are they talking about? Understand it and then solve it. With practice, your speed will improve. But even when your speed improves, just be extremely watchful about getting all parts right. right? That's the crux of making sense of doing justice to questions in this section. Right? On that note, I'll call it a day. Basically, take a screenshot of this, take a screenshot of the table, solve this question. In about three, four weeks time, once you run through all the question types, we'll definitely have solutions to these questions. Right? Till then, post your answers to the comment section of this video. Best wishes.